Before I move on to the various parts that need to be attached to the pump body, a quick update on my last video where I asked about this little feature shown on Don's drawing. Thank you to Simon Hollyfield who pointed out that this was a channel to allow water in the bore of the pump to exit via the outlet port should the ram extend that far. I have checked with Fusion 360 and although the pump's ram does not block the outlet in normal use, the channel will prevent hydraulic lock should the ram ever be pushed that far into the body, which in turn should prevent the seal or gasket on the base from blowing. Thank you Simon. I'll kick off with the gland. There is nothing difficult with this, but I will walk through the order in which I carried out the machining. As I did for the pump body, I first clean up the mounting stub by centering the casting in the fore jaw and then turning a clean diameter. With the casting reversed and recentered, I face off the end and turn the diameter to suit the gland recess in the pump body. I also clean up what will be the inside face of the flange. It's important that the bore is concentric with the outer diameter, so after sawing off the stub, I use a collet chuck to hold the part, face off to the required flange thickness, and then drill and ream the bore. I am, of course, using my modified drills with the rake removed from the cutting faces. To drill the holes in the flange for the mounting bolts, I reuse the mandrel I turned earlier and hold it in a collet chuck. After finding the center of the mandrel, I use my edge finder to roughly line up the flange on the x-axis. There's plenty of material to come off the flange, so I don't need to be too exact here. Once lined up, it's a simple job to drill the holes 90mm apart. To remove the excess and clean up the flange, I revert to my usual approach of using some hardened silver steel buttons and file it to shape. I'll make the inlet elbow in two parts, both of which are simple turning exercises, and then solder them together. Although I silver soldered the parts together, I could have used soft solder as there will be no high temperatures to worry about when the parts are in use. I'm not showing the turning of the bore retainer or the outlet union and its associated nipple as they are all simple exercises, but we can see them here. For the ram I'm using some 10mm stainless rod and as before in this build I've not opted to use precision roll bar as it doesn't appear to be too easy to get hold of. To drill the hole for the pin I mount the ram in a collet chuck in the mill, find the ends and centre and drill through. 
For the slot I use a 2mm slitting saw and after cutting the initial slot I widen out to 3mm by moving the saw up and then down by half a mil. My main consideration here is avoiding work hardening the part because if it does harden it's going in the bin. Hence the liberal application of oil. Rounding off the end just requires a bit of work with the files as usual using a hardened button as a guide. I was rather hoping that I wouldn't have to turn the outer body of the pump but the dimensions of the outlet port means that I will need to clear some space for the hex head on the outlet union. So it's back onto the mandrel in the lathe. First I set the x-axis digital readout at zero for this end of the body with the tool almost touching the outlet face and then for the other end on this side of the flange I set my carriage stop. I'm using a parting off blade which is not ideal but with very shallow cuts to a maximum of 0.1mm deep the loading on the side faces is manageable. Taking multiple cuts starting at zero on my x-axis and moving up to the carriage stop I bring the diameter down to a point where I can fit the union into the port. I'm not actually looking for a specific diameter for the pump's body here. To finish off the body, I cut the slot where the inlet port breaks through into the bore. This is to prevent the bore from acting in reverse and stopping water flowing into the bore. I use a small slot drill for this and it's all done by eye, which given how small the slot is and the difficulty getting clear visibility is easier said than done. I do not side load the slot drill, rather I cut straight down but in two different positions and then use some needle files to bring the slot into shape. For the slot into the outlet port to prevent hydraulic lock, I carefully file this to shape. When fitted to the loco, the pump is located on the rear side of the cylinder stretcher, which I did not drill the mounting holes for when I made it, so a few minutes in the milling machine gets that sorted. So here we have the collection of parts to make up the pump and you'll see that I've also made a gasket for the pump base to seal against the stretcher. Whilst assembling the pump I need to seat the balls into their respective valves. For the outlet this is on the inside of the outlet port and to do so I drop a stainless steel ball into location and using a punch give the ball a good solid tap to form the sealing face in the brass. On the inlet side, the ball seat is on the outlet face of the inlet oboe and again a good strike with the hammer should nicely form the seat. Again I should say thank you to Bruce for curding, this time for advising that the ball I used to form the seat should not be the ball I use in the pump. Assembly is quite straightforward, of course not forgetting to include the balls. To seal the threads I use some Loctite 542. Apparently the amount of float the balls have is quite critical to prevent hunting when the pump is in use and Don has given a recommended dimension but I have no idea how I'm going to measure that so I guess I'm just going to have to suck it and see. OK, let's give it a test. I've got some water in the bottle here, which is connected via this hose into the pump inlet. 
in this position the water level is about 50 millimeters above the pump so enough to give a positive pressure at the inlet i've not got the outlet union in place here but you can see that as i push and pull the ram water does flow at the outlet and if i try and seal it with my finger the water does get forced out unfortunately i don't have a pressure gauge so i can't check what pressure i'm generating and whether or not it's enough to get into the boiler but as it's a positive displacement pump my tolerances aside that should not be an issue on this cheerful note i'll end this video and say thanks for watching